let's talk about something many of us struggle with, and that's starting where you are right now, no matter how you feel about your body or where you are in life. It's so easy to get stuck in comparing yourself to others, but today I want to remind you that your journey starts exactly where you are, and that's okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we are all about creating a life you love. So with that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So I am officially down 50 pounds, and I pretty much went from this to this. And honestly, I have a message that I wanna give you guys today that is super simple, and it is as simple as you just have to get started. I don't care where you are in your journey, whether you are a beginner, where you, whether you are a person who kind of just fell off and like you're just trying to get back going. I don't care if you're a person who just simply plateaued. The simple answer is to just do it, like just get started. Like Take the steps to get to the place that you're trying to go because honestly, we can get caught up in the comparison of, of scrolling TikTok, scrolling Instagram, looking at people who have these nice bodies all day, looking at people who are meal prepping, like, oh, I want to do that, or oh, I want to have cute workout outfits, or oh, I see this person do Pilates, I want to do Pilates, oh, this person does kickboxing, now I want to do kickboxing. It's like, you're trying to do all of this planning, but are you actually doing anything? There are people who are like, I don't know, I've been given this advice before and this is the most stupidest advice, so don't listen to it, but do you want to lose all that weight before you even have a baby? Like, yeah, like you want to be your smallest that you're going to be because when you have a baby, you're going to gain weight. And I just kind of feel like there's no perfect time. Like just start now, like be at the body that you want to be. There's no perfect time for that. Like just do it now. Like it's as simple as that. But honestly, the, the reason that you need to start now is because you honestly have to overcome the mindset of like, of the, of the weight game. Like, I don't know about y'all. Like I've always wanted to like weigh, you know, in my one thirties, one twenties, I never weigh that. I can't remember ever weighing that a day in my life, maybe when I was little, but honestly, I feel like I went from like 100 pounds to like 160 pounds. So I never weighed what I wanted to weigh. I never weighed what normal teenagers were weighing. I was weighing what a grown ass woman was weighing. So it's like, why did I wait so long? So I am telling you guys this because this is advice that I don't think I was given in this kind of way, but there is power in taking, you know, those small steps. I've always looked at weight loss as like, oh my God, I have so much freaking weight to lose. And some people may not think it's a lot of weight, but I had to lose 60 pounds. Now I'm officially down 50 out of those 60 pounds, but that didn't just start with, oh, I need to weigh 130 pounds. Like, how do I get there? Like I had to really stop and think about this in a small steps kind of way. Like think about, how much is realistic? Like how much is a realistic weight? Um, something that I did was I took this by a 15 pound kind of like increments kind of thing, but I don't honestly think that's where I started. I think I started with like, just lose five pounds, just lose another five pounds. And then I got to the point where I was at like 160. 160 was halfway to the point of 130. And I actually started at 194. I don't know if I mentioned that, but once I got to 160, my halfway point, I'm like, oh, 30 pounds, that's nothing. That's 15 and 15. And I think this is where I got to the place where I was actually serious about it. And I'm like, I'm going to lose this weight. I told myself I was going to lose the 30 pounds. So right now I'm just waiting to lose my last 10 pounds. But that didn't start with just looking at the big goal from the beginning. I had to break this down into actionable steps to even get it started. Like even thinking about, you know, I'm, I've always worked out. So working out was not my problem, but the cutting calories is the problem. Like how much are you really supposed to eat is the problem. And I think there's a lot of like misinformation online. Lots of people give this blanket, like one size fit all approach to weight loss and tell people like, oh, you don't need to eat um, anything under 1500 calories. And mind you, this person is probably five, six, five, seven. But what about people who are five feet? 
four eleven, like stuff like that. There are short people out here who don't need to eat that much food. And I think that is a place where I kind of like got lost in the mumbo jumbo because I've had instances in life where I've lost weight and I lost weight eating, you know, the 1200, 1300 calories. And I knew that is what my body needed. But when you get online and you want to be like this muscle mommy, like these other girls, you want to have your gains, you want to go to the gym, you want to lift weights and do all of this other stuff, take creatine, like all of this stuff honestly makes you more hungry too. But they're telling you like, oh, you need to eat way more than that. And honestly, I did not need to eat way more than that. So a small step that I had to take is I had to really take a look at my diet. Like what can I actually start cutting out of my diet to make me see the results that I wanted to see? Because like I said, working out was not the problem. I work out very hard pretty much every day. On a good week, it's every day. Um, And then most days, it's just six days a week. So, I mean, that wasn't the problem. The food was the problem. And honestly, when it comes to weight loss, food is the hardest. Working out is the easy part, y'all. I'm going to just tell y'all that right now. Working out is easy. It is really getting that diet in check that may be the challenge. And it's honestly not even as hard as we think. It's really all just a mind game. So you got to get your mindset together to actually do it. And the other thing is like, when we talk about having these small wins, like the more you have these small wins, okay, I lost five pounds. Okay, I lost another five pounds. Okay, I'm in a different pant size. Like these small wins build up the momentum, like get you excited to continue on this journey. And it's like, it's getting you closer and closer and closer to the goal that you wanna be at. And honestly, that just helps you build your confidence. And the hardest part is just taking the first step. And once you take the first step, it just gets easier from that point. But you honestly have to be ready. You have to believe it and you have to actually want it because you can start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. But nothing's ever going to happen because you're not being consistent. You're not being serious about it. So get serious about it and get started. It's just as simple as that. So like stop waiting and honestly, just start now. Um, There are lots of people online that can kind of help you feel encouraged and motivated. You can join like groups where people are kind of wanting the same things that you want that'll help keep you like accountable because sometimes the people around us aren't the people who are going to hold us accountable are honestly probably the people who are going to be like oh you can just have a little bit you can just have a little bit no you can't have a little bit you need to be disciplined you need to stick to your goal stick to your plan. Now, that might sound a little bit extreme, but honestly, I'm going to give you guys some actionable steps that will help you if you're in the beginning stages, honestly. And if you feel like these are too small, you can ramp it up, you can elevate it, you can make it better, you can add your own goals to this. But first things first is in the actionable steps, I want you guys to move your body more. Um, If you're a beginner to weight loss, it can be intimidating to go to the gym. It can be intimidating finding the right gym. Um, I don't know about y'all, but like I started off in Planet Fitness and this is no shade to Planet Fitness, but the moment I left Planet Fitness, I started to see better results in my weight loss. I honestly think the weights are lighter there. Like the weights didn't feel the same. So if I was like bench pressed and like 40 pounds at Planet Fitness, when I went to LA Fitness, They felt nowhere near the same. So I do think that they do that because it's like a no judgment free zone. They give bagels, they give pizza and sure it's okay to have a cheat day every once in a while. But like if this is like a normal behavior and it's like you only see people doing like cardio and stuff like that, like it might be a good thing to change up your your space. But like I said, this advice might be, you know, better for a beginner and maybe you're not ready to get in the gym. So an easy thing that you can do is just move your body more. Moving your body doesn't mean you actually have to go to the gym. You can move your body at work. You can move your body at home. You can go for short walks outside. Um, if you work a sedentary job, like I do when I'm at home, I have to be pretty much glued to my computer because my teams has to be up all day. And also when I'm in the office, I have to be there three days a week. And it's like, I have to be there those eight hours and say, I don't have a fully packed schedule. Sometimes what I'll do in my free time is I just walk laps in the building and make sure I'm getting my steps in. I typically like to go for 10 K steps a day. That might be, you know, excessive for somebody who's just starting out but just try get you an apple watch track your steps um i don't know if the phone like kind of tracks them but it'll give you like a rough measurement of where you're actually at just try to move your body more if you don't want to do it by walking because that seems boring or something like that 
if you're at home, turn on some music, dance for 10 to 20 minutes, um, turn on a workout video like on YouTube, 10 to 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be anything extreme. We just have to start moving our body. And honestly, the more you move your body, the longer you move your body, the more calories that you're going to burn. And honestly, that is going to help you in your weight loss journey because you're going to be putting yourself into some sort of deficit as long as you're not eating, you know, over the calories that you're supposed to have. So I think that's an easy like first step to get started is to just simply move your body more. You don't have to be intimidated about it. It's as easy as just taking a walk outside. It's as easy as being old school and just turning on a walk away the pounds video, turn your own music on so you don't have to listen to like the old person music and stuff like that. But just not old person music, but the walk away the pounds is an old DVD. So I'm just trying to say like, make it more modern by listening to music that you listen to while you do it. You can do that for any workout. Some people like to do grow with Joe, grow with Joe workouts. Um, I tried them, but I'm honestly not like a big dancer, so I don't really like them. But like there is easy ways for you to work out at home. You don't have to be scared of the gym because you can just start at home. And then once you feel comfortable like doing certain things at home, go to the gym. Or if you live in an apartment, your apartments usually have like fitness centers. I simply go to the fitness center around like 4 or 5 a.m. Nobody's in there. You have the gym to yourself. You can do whatever you want to do. You can look stupid like you can even go down to there and walk on this walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes and it's like that is making strides to your day that is getting yourself moving more and more every day and it doesn't have to be oh I'm doing crossfit I'm running I'm jumping I'm doing burpees like we don't have to start out like that it's start we're we're doing we're talking small steps here today just move your body more Okay, and then next we're going to go into my favorite tip because this is something that I applied to my life. And it truly made a difference because we don't think about these things. And that is taking on healthy swaps. Like sometimes we we like, oh, I could never be healthy like you because I don't want to eat rabbit food. You guys, I don't know how many times I've heard like people say ignorant stuff to me like that. And the thing is like, oh, your food stinks. All you eat is greens. But it's like you want to be fueling your body with good stuff because I'm telling you like this processed junk that we have here in this country, it's not doing anything for you. But if you insist on having like certain foods that you like, just find a healthy swap, y'all. It's not even that deep. So let's just say you're a a pop drinker and you have to drink like four Cokes a day. Um, Let's see what calories in a can of Coca-Cola. Calories in a can of Coca-Cola. All right. So the calories in a can of Coca-Cola, 12 ounces, says 140 calories. Okay. You love pop. You love juice. But let's find a healthy swap for that. So a swap that I actually love, and I'm not a huge like pop drinker, but sometimes I like to do Ollie Pop with my dinner just to have like a little bit of flavor. And I don't necessarily get the, the cola kind because I like the um, strawberry vanilla soda that they have. But I have tried the the vintage cola from Ollie Pop. I've also tried the Dr. Pepper version of the Ollie Pop, and they taste pretty similar guys it's not even that serious like sometimes we just think things are healthy and it means that they're nasty but it's not and when you look at the calories inside of a olipop there's another pop called poppy but the reason I don't like to get the poppy one is because the poppy ones are usually not refrigerated and I feel like if it's a probiotic soda why isn't it refrigerated but anywho the calories in an olipop cola is 35 calories so think about it all right If you do four Coca-Colas a day, so that's 140 times four, that's 560 calories for the day that you've wasted on empty calories of soda, pop. Like it's not giving you any nutrients. It's not doing anything for you. But say if you want to have four Olipops a day, not only is it like less calories, but it also is a probiotic soda. So it's going to help your gut health at the same time. So if 35 calories are in a can of Olipop times that by four. That's only 140 calories for the day. For the price in calories for one Coca-Cola, 
you can have four Olipops. And that's when I say about like having your healthy swaps, like that is an easy swap to make. That is going to help you get into a deficit. Honestly, just right there. If you're a pop drinker, like just start swapping stuff out. If you're a person who like doesn't like the taste of water and stuff like that, they have carbonated waters with flavors. If you don't like a carbonated water, um, they have this brand called like Hint and it has just literally a hint of flavor. Like when I say it's a little bit, it's not that much flavor, but it's something. They have stuff that you can add to your water to make you kind of like have something to taste, but it's not adding the additional calories that will honestly go against your calorie deficit if you're trying to, you know, go back on the calories. That actually kind of brings me into my next point, and it is to drink more water. Um, personally, for me, I do have a hard time drinking water necessarily. <sighs> I honestly just don't really like the taste of it. And I'm one of those people to where I had to figure out how I can actually make water enjoyable for me to drink. And one of the easiest hacks for me to do was to get a water bottle with a straw. And I don't know what it is about the straw, but it encourages me to drink more water. Like I'm not good with those um, small like little water bottles that you get in the pack when I tell you it's probably at least five or six have drinking water bottles around the house, it's like, I don't know. I just never finish them. But when I drink out of a straw, I finish the entire cup of water. So what I did was I hopped on the Stanley train. You don't have to hop on the Stanley train because there are much more affordable, healthy water bottles out there. But get you a cute water bottle with a straw. They even have water bottles with like times and stuff on them to help keep you motivated like this time you should have already drunk this much water like do stuff to make it enjoyable make it more fun and a lot of times people give this advice online of oh you need to drink a gallon of water um you don't necessarily need to drink a gallon of water because I don't know about y'all but have you ever drank a gallon of water and then you were literally peeing all day you're literally peeing out your minerals that you should have in your body, peeing out everything. And honestly, that might cause you to be a little bit dehydrated because it's going right through you. So a good gauge for you to have like in a certain amount of water is to do your body weight in half in ounces. And I don't know if I explained that correctly or explained it to make sense, but say it like this. If I weigh 140 pounds, 140 divided by two, I'm no math wizard, so... <laughs> Um, that is 70 calories. So a good aim, I mean, not 70 calories, that is <laughs> 140 divided by two is 70. So a good gauge for me would be to drink 70 ounces of water. And that would be a healthy amount of water for me to have throughout the day. Now, if you're a person who doesn't really like the taste of water, people don't really like what I'm about to say, but I, I like it in Try having coconut water. Coconut water is way more hydrating than having actual water. Um, some people don't really like the taste, but there are different kinds of coconut water that honestly taste better. I don't like the coconut water that's like in cans. Um, the ones in cartons can be kind of funny tasting too, but Target actually has a good coconut water where it's like infused with like peach and mango or something like that. That one is good, but the best, best, best coconut water out there honestly is I want to say it's called Forgotten Harvest, and it's expensive. It's like $4 a bottle, but it's good, and I feel hydrated, and I feel good, and honestly, it's just good for you, and that's another like thing that you can do for like a healthy swap. It's not like loaded in calories like a juice would be, so think about things like that. They have like bottles of like watermelon juice that you can do so like and I wouldn't even necessarily say like overdo it with the juices either because juices can be so high in calories as well or high in sugar and it's like sometimes they say when you juice you're not really getting the full nutrients of the food anyway because you're taking away the fiber so I wouldn't even say like load up on juices I would say like just add juices in your diet like here and there just to have like you know a taste of things but like that is still a healthy swap if you're a person who likes to do you know only pop and stuff like that still going to be way better for you than pop so I just gave you guys three actionable steps that you can honestly start today if it's early and if you don't want to start today you can start tomorrow that is move your body more make healthy swaps and drink more water that is the easiest way to get started that is the least intimidating way to get started I didn't ask you to do a whole bunch of crazy strenuous stuff I didn't ask you to simply change your whole meal plan like just take the baby steps the small steps are going to help you 
build the confidence to keep doing this, to build the momentum, to see the changes. Like, and they're going to start to make you feel a little bit good. You're like, oh, I'm drinking my greens in the morning. Like, it's going to make you feel better, but you don't have to start like extreme. Like I said, start small. These are some actionable steps that I gave you guys. I want to encourage you guys to set a goal for tomorrow of some of the action steps that I've given you that you can use for tomorrow or make up your own action steps that you can incorporate in your day that is going to make it, you know, easy for you. Some small steps to kind of just get started or even just get back on track because what I just gave you is something that is, I would say, is fairly easy. So say if you want to do something a little bit more extreme, think of some things that can be action, like think of some action steps that are a little bit more extreme that can help you get started tomorrow. Honestly, I just want to end on the biggest benefit of actually just starting. It really helps you break the cycle of procrastination. I don't know about y'all, but it is so easy to procrastinate. And it's like, oh, I'm going to work out on Monday. And it turns into next Monday. And it turns into next Monday. I know you guys seen that TikTok where they're they're like making jokes. Like, girl, we're going to start that diet next Monday. Baby, we're going to do that gym next week. We're going to do that gym. We're going to get that cauliflower rice and that salmon next week. Mm-hmm. We're going to start the keto. We're going to start. And it's like you make a joke about your health like all of the time and you say like, oh, my God, I wish my belly was small. Oh, my God, I wish my arms were smaller. But if you never actually get started, it's never going to happen, guys. But the, the moment you take the first step, you're literally fighting against that procrastination. And the more and more you do it, you are building up, you know, the consistency, the habits and to just make it a part of your daily life. Because I feel like when we think about it from a just starting standpoint, it just seems like a lot of change. But I hope this video really helps you guys think about the small steps that you can take. Make the small steps. Take the goals down and break them down into small, actionable steps for you. Because when you start off strong, like super big and stuff like that, sometimes you get burnt out. And it's like it may be too extreme for you to keep up with. But if you start small, it helps you build that momentum, helps you build the confidence. And then, hey, next thing you know it, your clothes are going to be fitting better. Your skin is going to be looking better. The scale is going to be down. But all you have to do is start. And that was the biggest thing for me. It was like, I was starting, I was stopping, I was starting, I was stopping. At one moment, I got to the point where I'm like, this is the last time I'm starting this. <laughs> like, legit. And now, look at me. I'm down 50 pounds. Um, some people, like, lose 50 pounds in one year. However, um, I lost mine within, like, two years. The first year, I lost 20 pounds, maintained it. And the reason that I kind of did it like this, it wasn't anything intentional, but like I went from like 194 to like 165, 170. And I've always been 170. So that was like my comfort zone. And then something just happened. Like I got engaged. I'm like, I'm about to turn 30. And I'm like, I want to get in the best shape of my life. And like I said, it's no perfect time for this. But I feel like I owed it to myself. I'm like, I've never been in the body that I want to be in. And this is the last time I'm starting. And when I tell you I went out with a bang this year, and we still have a few months left in this year. So I can still make, you know, the progress. I have 10 more pounds that I want to lose. And obviously, I, I don't really have a problem maintaining weight. Um, the only reason I actually went up in weight is because I have a thyroid problem. But just showing that I was able to maintain those 20 pounds last year shows me that I know how to maintain it. Shows me that I know what to do. But I had to make a few more changes to actually get to the place that I wanted to be. And like I said, you just break that stuff down into smaller goals. Once I got to 160, I'm like, all right, I'm 30 pounds for my goal. Break that down into 15 pound increments. And it's like to look at 15 pounds is way smaller than to look at 30 pounds or 15 pounds is too big. Do 10 pounds, do five pounds. Like when we think like, oh, I only lost a pound or oh, I only lost three pounds, like a pound physically, like in the hand, I'll put a picture on the screen is is a lot. It's a lot more than what we think. Like, so if you lose one pound, it may seem small to you, but it's actually a big thing and you should celebrate, you know, those small wins. Okay, one pound, it's a small win, but it's really a big win because it's pushing you closer and closer to your goals. So 
I hope you guys found some motivation within this video today. Um, I hope this video encouraged you to just start, y'all, because if you don't start, nothing's ever going to happen. The perfect time is never going to be here. The perfect diet is never going to be here. Like you have to figure out what works for you, but it's not going to happen if you stay in the planning stages. It's not going to happen if you stay in the comparing pages. It's not going to happen if you're just looking at other people working out online. You have to get started yourself. And I hope you guys, you know, find a community around you of people that help keep you motivated. Sometimes you have to go to the internet to find that because the people around you may not be the people to keep you accountable and keep you motivated or help you make those healthy choices. But sometimes you just got to find your tribe and your tribe might not be your friends. Your tribe might not be your parents. Your tribe might not be your family, just in general. So find good people around you. Invite people to workout classes. <laughs> Invite people for neighborhood walks and just get started. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, guys. I promise you these small steps will help move you, build your confidence for you to start taking bigger steps and getting closer and closer to your goals. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Share this video with a friend and I hope you guys stay a while. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions about like a weight loss journey, anything specific, please let me know in the comments below. I am here to help people because I feel like there's so much like information online that can be super conflicted and at the end of the day, we're all different individuals. So there's never a one size approach when it comes to a weight loss journey. So let me know in the comments down below and we can chat about it. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye. She making that shake, breaking that bait till the back break.